Now we are going to intubate the patient. The patient is under supraglottic ventilation now, connected to the ventilation circuit. We can choose to intubate him with any available optical device. In this example, we'll be using a video laryngoscope. Following the procedure we described in the previous videos, we are starting with a spritz tube already in place as a supraglottic airway device, allowing to oxygenate and to ventilate the patient efficiently. If the intubation is required, first, disconnect the patient from the ventilation circuit. Deflate the proximal cuff so that the laryngoscope can be introduced in the patient's mouth. Insert the spritz tube's dedicated stylet inside the tube. Retract the tube slightly to allow an easy insertion of the laryngoscope's blade. Introduce the blade and visualize the vocal cords. Retract the tube slightly to get a better vision, if needed. Push the stylet through the vocal cords opening. At this point, you can let the spritz tube slide down through the vocal cords using the stylet as a guide. That's it. The patient is intubated. Proceed with reinflating the proximal cuff, this time with less volume of air since it is in the trachea, and resume ventilating the patient. An important thing to do is to check the tracheal pressure of the proximal cuff with a pressure gauge. Now you can reconnect the patient to the ventilation circuit. In case of patients that need to undergo laparoscopic surgery or have their stomach drained, the distal cuff still placed in the esophagus can be easily deflated and removed by simply pulling it out of the patient's mouth. You can choose to leave it hanging outside or cut it off. The spritz tube has been converted from a supraglottic device to an endotracheal device with no need for an external tube to pass through the device, as in case of the laryngeal mask or laryngeal tube that require inserting an endotracheal tube through the lumen.